Illusion <laughs> Motion. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. It is Tuesday, y'all. It is That's Happening Tuesday. I see you, Regina Shorts, rolling up in here. Good morning to you. Deborah Johnson, good morning to you. Chardinia, what's up? Good morning. Marion Jackson, good morning to you. Robert Holman, grand rising to you, sir. And Dr. Antoinette, good morning. Yeah, we have a lot to cover this morning. Um, so it's That's Happening Tuesday. Go ahead, invite some friends. Say, hey, y'all need to check this out. Do us a favor. Hit that uh, thumbs up button to get the alerts going. Deborah Johnson said, I love that white. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, if y'all could hit that thumbs up, hit uh, show that like, do what you do. Get on your other device and say, come on on over here to News in Motion. Give them the web address, which is youtube.com backslash Gail Dudley. Let's get this party started. All right, y'all. Today is Tuesday, y'all. It is Tuesday, October the 8th, 2024. I am your host, Gail Dudley. This is News in Motion. We are now in the thick of it, y'all. We are now in the thick of it, y'all. So you're going to get sick of me, but I don't care. Just come on and hang out with us anyway. I see you, Jackie. What's up, Kim Edmondson? So I have a question. I have a question. Again, hit that hit that thumbs up button. I have a question. Please share one thing about your weekend that was exciting or even devastating so we can pray for you. And then one item that is on your vote plan. Okay, please share one thing about your weekend, whether it was great or um, devastating. So we can pray for you if it was devastating. And one item that um, you have on your vote plan. Let's put that in there because maybe somebody's not thinking about that. So one thing about my weekend, I was in Nashville, Tennessee. For my first time ever, I'd never been in Nashville, Tennessee for a, a wedding. Um, it's interesting when your children's friends start getting married and they invite you to the wedding. We had an amazing time. We had an amazing time. Thank you to everyone who participated with my shenanigans of which shoe to wear. The black was cool, but that teal really set it off. The teal really set it off. And then by the time we got to the reception, we were in flip-flops anyway, so it didn't matter. But we had an amazing time, an amazing time. So congratulations to Gabe and Morgan. Um, may there be many blessings on your uh, nuptials. Uh, I see my brother coming in here. Marianne said, your pictures from the wedding were beautiful. Uh, you chose the right shoes. Look, I had to go with the teal. Good morning to my brother. I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, and Deborah said that dress was fire. Listen, listen, I love all the colors. I absolutely love all the colors. All right, so that was about me. So again, put in the chat if you don't mind. Share one thing about your weekend whether it was exciting or devastating. And if it was devastating, devastating, let us know so we can be praying for you. And then one item that's on your vote plan. Dr. Antoinette says celebrated the 30th anniversary of two friends. Happy anniversary to them. Uh, voter registration drive with my sorority sisters. Okay, voter registration drive. And then she said, and that teal set it off. Listen, y'all, that teal shoe was the bomb. And it was so funny. Somebody said, um, well, um, if you don't have them yet, I said, oh, no, I have these both in my closet. I just haven't decided which one to put on. Uh, Jackie said, we had a family taco night. Well, that sounds wonderful. With games at my niece's new home. Well, congratulations to your niece and their new home. And then taco night and games sounds like a plan. I love that. Keep filling up the chat if you don't mind so we know what's happening. Adrian, good morning to you. We just like to know what you do. Yeah, we're a community, and I really believe in the strength of community and how we can engage and so forth. Attended, oh, all right, Kim Edmondson, attended a Kamala fundraiser. I'm sure that was amazing. So that's great. That's great. Keep it going, y'all. Keep it going. Well, don't forget to add one thing that is a part of your vote plan. One thing that's a part of your vote plan. My vote plan is that I don't want to go alone. Uh, I don't want to go alone. So with that being said, Ohio. You can start voting today. Ohio, you can start voting today. Voter registration ended yesterday, October the 7th for Ohioans. But today you can start voting. You can start early voting. So let's go. It begins today. So again, a part of my vote plan is to go with someone because of the area that I have to go to. Also, California, Maine, and Montana, Nebraska, Indiana, 
New Mexico, again, Ohio and Wyoming. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. We can vote, y'all. We can vote. Uh, Arizona, you can begin voting tomorrow, October the 9th. Let me see what some of you are saying. Dr. Antoinette said, strolling to the polls. I already have my shirt in shots. I like that. Uh, make sure your shirt does not have... Uh, you got to be careful with the shirt. Now, well, let me say, you're in Maryland, so maybe it's different. Y'all know your rules. Know your rules. Uh, now, the chucks and pearls will be cool, but make sure you can wear paraphernalia to your voting location. I know in Ohio, we cannot. We cannot in Ohio. So check your rules. Don't get turned away or go somewhere and turn your shirt inside out if it's a problem. Uh, Jackie says, also, I plan to vote early and remind family and friends to vote. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Arizona, you can begin voting tomorrow. So let me break this down. Let me break this down. This is going to be a part of every morning from here until November the 5th. So you're just going to have to indulge me. But I am also have some information on FEMA that, believe me, you are going to want to hear. Um, uh, Dr. Angela said, nope, Zeta Blue with white print that says stroll to the post. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Kim Evans says, I plan to make sure my sons make it to the polls. I love that. We got to get our young people out, y'all. We have to. So again, California early voting started for you on yesterday. It will end on Monday, November the 4th. And then your election day, of course, is November the, gen the major general election, November the 5th. May, your early voting started on, started on yesterday as well. It will end Thursday, October the 31st. Remember that Thursday, October 31st. Montana, your voting, early voting started on yesterday. It will end on November the 4th. And if you're wondering why I share these dates and everything, you may know somebody in these locations, but believe it or not, whether it's our audio or, or video or replay, we get all of these people that come on here. We've looked at our demographics and we're so excited that you decided to share this these mornings with us. Nebraska, your early voting voting started on yesterday, October the 7th, and it will end Monday, November the 4th. I see you, Lori Williams. Uh, Indiana, Wallace, excuse me. Indiana, um, your early voting starts today, and it ends on November the 4th. New Mexico, your early voting, your early voting started today, and it ends on November the 2nd, on November the 2nd. New Mexico, Ohio, here we are. It starts today, it ends on Sunday. November the 3rd, and I believe that strolls to the polls uh, or souls to the polls on that Sunday. Wyoming, your early voting started on Tuesday or starts today, Tuesday, October the 8th. It ends on Monday, November the 4th. And Arizona, yours will start on tomorrow, October the 9th, and it will end on Friday, November the 1st. November the 1st. So I want you all to know these. Marion says, join my oldest for a grief meeting. Uh, my vote plan is that is to go as a group uh, with my youngest son and some friends next week due to my work schedule this week. I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all have that plan. All right, y'all. Things to know. Things to know. Things to know. Before we really go deep, I want to share this as I'm going into things to know. Milton, Hurricane Milton has become uh, one of the top five most intense Atlantic hurricanes on record as of yesterday evening according to the National Weather Service in Jacksonville, Florida. Milton strengthened to a Category 5, they call it a powerhouse on Monday, driving sustained winds of 165 miles per hour as it rolled across the Gulf of Mexico, bound for what could be a devastating crash Wednesday along Florida, uh, Florida's already storm battered western coast. Again, this is coming from uh, the National Weather Service. They talk about the speed that it rapidly strengthened from a Category 2 to a Category 5 in just a few hours. They talked about the increased strength of 95 miles per hour within 24 hours. They are talking about um, please be um, uh, uh, mindful of weather. If your power or electricity has gone off, have some sort of portable radio, have some sort of, some way of communication. Do not always depend upon your phones if the lines go down. And to track the Milton uh, path, it's, it's expected to move near or just north of the peninsula Tuesday before crossing the eastern Gulf of Mexico uh, uh, and nearing the west coast of, of Florida by Wednesday. They're saying about Wednesday, about 8 p.m., it will hit that Tampa area, that Tampa area. So please be mindful of that. And this is what I want to say about that. Those of you who are in that path, whether you are direct 
or anywhere there where there could be flooding or anything if you have an opportunity to early vote do it do it do it do it do it um so let me go to florida first um your voter registration ended on yesterday your absentee ballots will begin on october 24th voting will go from october the 26th to november the 2nd as an early voting and then november the 5th of course is the general voting if you are in this path and you can now you you don't get you can you have until october 24th to get your absentee ballot but you don't know where you may be go and pick it up go and pick it up um there just be mindful of that if you can fit that in to your gathering your things to go do that georgia your early voting ended on yesterday absentee ballots uh deadline to apply is october the 25th you are still experiencing flooding and damages from from uh, hurricane helene um your voting will begin early voting on october the 15th and it will go to november the 1st and then of course general voting on november the 5th if you have an opportunity to get your to apply for your absentee ballot as you're preparing do that today as well also arizona um you're not in that path but october the 7th was your deadline to register to vote um, your absentee ballots will begin on October the 5th. Your voting will begin October the 9th to November the 1st. Nevada uh, voter registration tomorrow is your deadline, October the 8th. Don't forget that October the 8th. Um, and that's to register to vote in person or by mail. Now, your deadline to register to vote online in Nevada, it is November the 5th. Absentee ballots is October 22nd. Ohio, we already know deadline was yesterday. Absentee ballot um, deadline to apply is October 29th. Voting starts today and it will go through November the 5th. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, Texas, your voter registration deadline was yesterday. Absentee ballots you have until October 25th. Your early voting is October 21st to November the 1st. All right, so as you plan your vote, I'm, I'm segueing into another segment here. As you plan your vote, um, I want you to understand with Milton now a Category 5 storm, I want you to remember these names. I want you to remember the names of Matt Gates in Florida. He voted against FEMA funds in Florida. Who does that? That's what he did. Daniel Weber, uh, Republican in Illinois. Gus, I think it's Blaraskis, um, Illinois. Anna Pauline Luna. Uh, also voted against. Laurel Lee voted against. Um, I'm saying Illinois. I'm sorry. These are all Florida. Forgive me. I'm looking at the IL, but I'm looking at something. I'm looking at two things at once. These are all Florida reps. Matt Gates, Daniel Webster, Gus Bilarakis, Anna Pauline Luna, Laurel Lee and Byron Donalds. They all voted against FEMA funds. Just let that resonate with you for a moment. They all voted against FEMA funds in Florida. So as this category five, Hurricane Milton is headed towards Tampa Bay and the surrounding areas, these six individuals voted against FEMA funds. Let's also look at, uh, good morning, Donnie. Let's also look at um, speaker Mike Johnson who also said no. What? Um, the federal emergency, um, oh, I just told you. Nope, I'm not gonna tell you the whole thing. I want y'all to tell me, put in the chat, put in the chat, put in the chat, put in the chat. The first person that puts in the chat, don't look it up, you should know this, uh, that knows uh, what F-E-M-A, FEMA stands for, put in the chat, put in the chat, put in the chat. You may get a little something. So this agency, um, is dealing with staffing and funding shortages amid the impact of Hurricane Helene. House Speaker Mike Johnson refused on Sunday to commit to reconvening the House before Election Day to aid recovery efforts. Um, 
Kim Evans said, say what? Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson said, no. In response to a letter from President Biden urging the congressional leaders um, back to replenish the federal disaster loan funding. Now, now we had the pande pandemic. We know that they can vote on Zoom. We know that they can vote electronically. They, they said, no. They said, no, no, we're not doing this. Like, it's a Category 5 storm. And those six individuals in Florida, are we serious right now? So y'all, um, Johnson said during a Fox News Sunday interview that he only do it after the election. He's not doing it before. See, they're playing politics with people's lives. And we need to be paying attention to this and we need to vote them out of office. Hello, somebody. Because this isn't about politics. See, they got mad. I don't know if you've heard this fallout. They've gotten mad because there's all of these governors who have been th thanking the Biden administration for sending the aid that they needed immediately, including Governor Kemp in, uh, in Georgia. E even uh, uh, the governor of Florida, I don't know why I keep wanting to mess up his name, Ron DeSantis, they thanked him. So now they're like, you can't, because they, they're recalling what happened uh, in New Jersey when Obama went to New Jersey during that hurricane and they believe that's how he won his second term. Are you kidding me? These are people's lives. So Mike Johnson said on Fox News on Sunday and I watched that interview because I was like, no, they got to be lying. They got to be lying on this dude. I went and rewatched that interview. He said, no, he's not doing anything until after the election. You are playing with people's lives. Are we serious right now? You're supposed to be a Christian man. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Did you forget that part of the Bible? But that's in there. But he said, no, he will only do it after the election. He said, I know we're running out of funds. We will do it after the election. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's talk FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. All right, Marion Jackson. All right, Donita. All right, Dr. Antoinette. So Dr. Antoinette on our end came through first. So I see Dr. Antoinette, Donita Booker, and Marion Jackson. It is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Dr. Uh, uh, Antoinette said, I thought that was a rumor. Lord help. They are playing with life. No, that's not a rumor, honey. Mm -mm. No, that's not a rumor. I was like, what is going on right now? He said it with his own words on Fox News because I didn't. I was like, there's no way this man said no. No way. No way that the six of them voted no. They live in Florida. No way. No way. And one of them lives in the Tampa area. That's their that's their district. Vote them out. Vote them out. So, y'all, just so that you know, because there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out here, that's what we're here for. The mission is to, to support the citizens and first responders to promote that as a nation we work together to build, sustain, and improve our capability to prepare for, protect against, respond to, recover from, and mitigate all hazards. That's taken right off the government website. All right, now the truth shall set us free. So let me take my time and tell you what this is all about. Y'all, we need to understand this. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, coordinates the federal government's role in preparing for and preventing, uh, mitigating the effects of respond, responding to and recovering from all domestic disasters, whether natural or man-made, including acts of terror. FEMA can trace its beginnings to the Congressional Act of 1803. That's how long they've been around. The act generally considered the first uh, piece of disaster legislation provided assistance to the New Hampshire town following an extensive fire. In the century that followed, ad, um, ad hoc legislation was passed more than a hundred times in response to hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters, okay? 2001, the terrorist attack of September the 11th. March 2003, FEMA joined 22 other federal agency programs and offices in becoming the Department of Homeland Security. October the 4th, 2006, it was not the Biden administration, Donald Trump. It was President George W. Bush signed into law the Post-Katrina Emergency Reform Act. The act significantly reorganized FEMA 
provided a substantial new authority to remedy gaps that became apparent in the response to Hurricane Katrina in uh, August 2005. He's trying to say the Biden amendment. No, 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 no. This act went into effect October the 4th, 2006, under President George W. Bush. Okay, he signed that into law. So let's do some fact checking real quick. Let's do some fact checking real quick um, because this is crazy. And, and if you hear people saying these things, that's the reason why we take our time to share it here, that you have the information to share with other people. We will put this fact sheet on the Friday rundown as well so that you can have it and have it handy. So fact checking falsehoods about FEMA. This is coming straight out of NPR. Um, some things that we need to understand when it comes to politics. Y'all, the agency says more than 3,000 North Carolina residents have been rescued or supported by more than 1,200 urban search and rescue personnel. Uh, with recovery effort aid by the National Guard. The National Guard was called to North Carolina. They have received already $100 million in federal transportation funds to rebuild roads, bridges, and that were washed out by the storm, okay? Now, uh, the former guy, Donald Trump, I'm gonna give you his name, the former guy has given a lot of misinformation, untruths to what's happening right now. And people, believe it or not, are believing him. And we need to correct it. We need to set the record straight. Um, he said they are offering them only $750 to people whose homes have been washed away. That is not true. That's not true. Okay. Um, that's not true. He goes on to say um, these people need serious assistance. That is true. Um, but again, we're talking a hundred million dollars in federal transportation funds. That's just to one particular area. That's the truth. It's not, he's, they're not just giving $750. Um, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris said there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation being pushed out here by the former president about what's available in particular to the survivors of Helene. Uh, Vice President Harris urging people to apply for aid. Now, they have recognized that if things have been washed away, where do you go? If there's a local library, hey, what's up, Stephanie? So good to see you. If there's a local library, um, churches, if they have uh, computers or systems, if you know someone who lives in those devastated areas, help them out. You get on your computer from where you are and plug in their information. Um, it is true. It is true. They need to have some way to connect with the people. So whether that's a hotel, whether they've driven to another, another location, they can be, they can be in Pennsylvania and apply for aid in North Carolina. The, the lie that he's spewing is incorrect. So we have to give them proper and correct information. Uh, Dr. Anthony said, call it what it is. It is a lie. It is a big lie and they need to fix it. Is FEMA running out of money? Well, to some degree, yeah, they are. But they're trying to get this funding. Remember, who has the power of the purse? Come on, y'all, Civics 101. Congress holds the power of the purse. They hold the money. And while I'm standing here, to, while I'm sitting here sharing this with you right now, um, everyone who believes that Donald Trump wrote you a check for stimulus money during the pandemic is a lie. His name was on the check, which they should never ever allow that to happen again. But the money came from Congress. There was a vote, okay? There was a vote. The money came from Congress. It did not come from Donald Trump. He's broke, okay? He, he's, it's just a lie. The money did not come from him. So they need Congress. That's why the president reached out to Speaker Mike Johnson can you reconvene Congress? Can they do a vote to give us more money for FEMA with Hurricane Milton about to hit Tampa? Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House and six representatives in Florida said no. Okay, that's the truth. 
That's the truth. That is the truth. That's right, Donita. It is Congress. That's the truth. Could FEMA dis uh could FEMA's disaster relief fund get more money soon? They could get money in as soon as like sixty seconds from now. If they would just convene a vote and take a vote. That's how this works. Okay, so know this information. We again will put it in the Friday rundown. In other news, in other news, attorney Tony Busby, uh Busby, excuse me, a Texas based attorney who's handling over 100 lawsuits against Sean Diddy Combs, is now working with his team of lawyers to, cert, to sort through 12,000 calls, which they received from a, a hotline that was set up of alleged victims. So victims of Sean, Petty, Sean Diddy Combs uh, have been calling in. They received over 12,000 calls within 24 hours. Y'all, that's concerning. That's really concerning. Um, Marion Jackson said, my stimulus check went uh, direct deposit as I didn't see the former guy's name on the check. Yeah, I think most everybody's did, uh, which is a true statement. But you remember, he had to put it up there. Um, also in news uh, that's happening, uh, renowned gospel and soul singer Sissy Houston, mother of Whitney Houston, passed away yesterday in her home in New Jersey, while receiving hops, 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 I can't even say it, hospice care. The two-time Grammy winner was 91. Taylor Swift has uh, passed Rihanna to become the richest female musician in the world with an estimate net worth of $1.6 billion. LeBron James and son Bronny became NBA's first father-son son duo to share court as both played in the Los Angeles Laker preseason game on Sunday night. And y'all, just for fun, live science reports that comb jellies, a type of deep sea jellyfish, can fuse their bodies together following injury. Behavior has never been observed in any other species. So now y'all know that. All right, y'all, Christmas holiday shopping anyone? Amazon, 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 Amazon kicks off um second annual prime day 48 hour sale today and i got i don't know i don't know why they sent me a um remember y'all used to get the jc penny catalog when we were young well amazon has one it's not like jc pennies used to be but um there's all kinds of things in here so check it out y'all don't spend too much money it's just the holiday season all right y'all the inspirational message and i'm out of here for today uh step into your power yeah y'all step into your power we all have that access, at that um, access to um, step into our power. Use it, use it, use it. This weekend, I'm gonna use this weekend as an idea, as an uh, analogy. This weekend, y'all know I'm in color, but not a lot of color. But I wanted that dress, and I saw that dress, and I bought that dress, and I must say I look great in that dress. Yes, I said it. But it was so, it was just like the color, the, the the joy, the excitement, just everything. I just stepped into it, you know, and I was headed to the black shoe. One, first of all, the black shoe is the bomb.com. But second of all, I was like, ah, it's, it's neutral, it's cool. But what, that teal shoe, that shoe been in my closet for a long time. I said, I'm going to bust this out because I saw the teal in the dress. Then the jewelry, y'all know that necklace came from uh, paparazzi, Latrice Jones, I bought that necklace from her. Then those earrings my daughter bought, purchased for me for one Christmas several years ago. And I put all of that together. Uh, Jamerson, who does my hair, he was like, girl, let it just let it fly, just let it go, don't try to make it in any formation, just let it do what, it, what it's going to do. And there was just power. And it was amazing what happened. This is why I'm sharing the story. It's not about me, but I have to use me in this analogy. You know, sometimes I think we go black or tan or bland in, in the colors that we wear so that we don't stand out. But putting on color, letting your joy comes out, brings attention to you. Okay, it does. Whether, you, whether it's positive or negative, it brings attention to you. And just that joy where people are like, Girl, that dress, those colors, your smile, your hair, the way your shoulders are back, you're carrying yourself. I had one lady say, I want some of that. I said, girl, it's yours. All you got to do is have it. And it, hit, it dawned on me, just stepping into our power. 
Y'all, it changes. So here's my question before I sign off today. What is it that you do that you try to stay in the background so that nobody takes a notice of you? Answer that question for yourself as we go about our week, as we go into talking to people about voting, as we talk about building our community. What's that one thing that you can contribute, but you're going to have to step into that power to do it? Donita said the joy was evident in your face. Girl, I was having a blast. Do you hear me? Lori says you rocked that. Uh, you looked amazing. Well, thank you so much. Um, but yes, Marion, uh, the JC Penny catalog and the Sears catalog, that was it. Um, they sent you this book, Lori, the Amazon book. Listen, it's like, it's like this isn't JC Penny. But seriously, y'all. Time to step into it. Time to step into it. There's so much that we can accomplish if we would just all come out of our shells and go for it. And it's not about competition. It's not about jealousies. Push that aside. Push the envy to the side. It's about camaraderie and coming out and our similarities and how we can do it. Stephanie saw that. Stephanie said, that's why I said, good morning, gorgeous. Thank you, girl. But y'all, there's so much that we can accomplish. We want to get the truth out about FEMA. We want to get the truth out about voting. Several voting deadlines did take place on yesterday or over the weekend uh, to register to vote in this election. There's some places where you can register to vote and vote at the same time. We'll be sharing those on tomorrow. But y'all, we got work to do. We got work to do. We got work to do. Step into your power so we can get the work done. Lori said, yes, don't look in it. Um, don't go into the light. Listen, don't go into the light. Listen, we have, to, we have to step in. We have to do it. We have to do it. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for hanging out with me this morning. That's all I have for you today. Tomorrow, y'all invite some folks to join us right here. Uh, www.youtube.com, the backslash Gail Dudley. Encourage people to hang out with us um, if they have any questions. And if you have questions, I'm glad I'm, I'm thinking about this. If you have questions, send your questions to our um, email. Let me see if I can get that banner up here. Send your questions to our email. I think I have an email. Maybe I don't have an email. Oh, yes, I do. Send your questions to this email, which is newsandmotionwithgail at gmail.com. We are going to do our best to go through the questions and answer your questions. Don't wait to Thursday town hall meetings. So just send that. If you have people, maybe they don't want to ask you, put it out there on your uh, website. Hey, if you have questions about voting, email this and Gail will talk about it online. Um, election poll workers are still needed. You can go to powerthepolls.org backslash news in motion. You can do that. If you have any questions about voting, you can go to vote.gov to find out questions, uh, to get answers to your questions, or you can go to ballotpedia.org as well. Now, if you are voting, I was trying to find that um, link. If you are voting and you run into any problem, here is your um, phone number. Go ahead and jot that down, everyone. 1-866-OUR-VOTE. 1-866-OUR-VOTE. That is the election protection hotline. 1-866-OUR-VOTE. And then the other, our voting rights hotline is 800-253-3931. Jot these down, y'all. 800-253-3931 is the voting rights and then the election protection is 1-866-R-VOTE. 1-866-R-VOTE. So again, have them email us um, and we will answer questions right here on News in Motion. All right, y'all. Y'all know what I say, everyone. Um, stay well. Listen, people are getting sick out there. Y'all stay well. And remember, make some bold moves. We're out. Motion, motion, motion. motion. motion.